Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, I'm going to show you how to open closed eyes if you don't have the new Photoshop Elements 2018, or if you don't want to or can't use their open closed eyes tool. Here's the original picture, and there she is with her eyes open, and I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training and you'll find links for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start this Photoshop Elements open closed eye video by just closing down this finished shot. There we go. Here's the original picture. Now let me just talk you through some of the problems that you can come up with when you're dealing with this particular kind of a facial edit. The first problem, of course, is you need to have eyes that match as closely as possible. So if you have a similar shot of the same person in basically the same pose, in the same angle, that's your best bet, and that's what we'll be using here to replace the eyes. You'll basically be taking the eyes from the one photo and placing them on top of this photo, and then doing some blending and so forth to merge the two together to make a realistic look. But again, the better or the closer match the eyes are to begin with, the easier this process is going to be. You can't really easily do this with somebody else's eyes unless, of course, they have a matching facial expression. Very, very important. Now, the second part of this is, can you even do this here inside of Photoshop Elements 2018 with their new tool? Let's take a look. So here's the new tool right here. There is the closed eye correction option over here on the right hand side. Ignore the left hand side stuff, that's all for red eye removal. So we're only over here. And use this tool, you click on open closed eyes. It then brings up the tool and the tool looks for the face and identifies the face in the photograph. There we go. It identified the face. Now if I use one of these pictures, it'll look wrong because these pictures are straight on and the eyes are straight. This is actually is about the only place this tool really works out well is if the eyes are straight on like that, just you know, looking straight at the camera. It works okay there. But let's see what happens over here. So what we need to do is we need to find another picture of the same model in basically the same pose, but with matching eyes. And we'll do that. Just move this a little bit here. There we go. By going to the organizer, this is the best way to do this. So make sure you have your pictures in the organizer. And as you can see right down here, I have two shots, two matching shots. Here's my original up there. I have this picture and I have this picture that are both matching shots. I have another shot of the same model right down here, but the tilt of the head and the turn of the head is different. So these wouldn't work as well as these two shots. Click on done. What happens next is that Photoshop Elements and this open closed eyes tool will then identify where the faces are on these two and allow you then to copy those over onto the original picture. Let's go ahead and click on done. And you'll see the problem here right away. There you go. Some files could not be open. Let me show you that one more time with just one picture. I'll choose just this one. This is the one that we'll actually be using. Choose done. And there you go. No faces found in selected photo. This is one of the big problems with this particular tool. Half the time I try this, it can't even find a face in the picture, even if it's obvious where it is. So, so much for the Photoshop Elements 2018 Open Closed Eyes tool. It can't even be used on this picture. So, there we are. So what do we do? We'll need to come in and find the eyes ourselves and do the same trick ourselves. We'll be basically going through the exact same steps with some additional tricks in here and some additional flexibility that the open closed eyes tool would have done if it could have even seen a face in those photographs. Okay, let's go ahead now and open up the other picture. Let's just switch over here to the organizer right there. There's a picture that I want. I'll be using this one. It's a better match than this is. Over here she's smiling and that crinkles up the eyes a little bit here. It's the basically the same expression, so it's a much better match. So we'll just right click on this picture, click edit with Photoshop Elements Editor right there, and this will bring it over into the editor. So what we need is to take the eyes from this picture, put them over here, 
as our first step. Now there are a few problems. Notice that this face is a little bit brighter than it is over here. The angle's a little bit different than it is. So there are a few things we have to still do adjustments on. But first things first, let's zoom in on this. Here we go. Nice tight zoom in. Grab one of our selection tools. I'll just use the regular lasso tool here. And I'll do a big lasso right around the eyes just like that. Get the eyebrows in and the bottom part of the coloration down there. That's all we really need. And then edit, copy. We can now close this one down. We're done with that file. Over in here, edit and paste. And there we go. There's the new eyes. You see they're a pretty good match. If I was going to drop them in place there, it's pretty close to the same thing. Now there are a few things you need to watch out about. I need to get the up and down position correct, the left and right position correct, any tilt adjustment has to be fixed, and once all of that is done, and spacing, once all that is done, we then need to blend these into the existing eyes. Now the easy way to do this, and there's no real super easy way, this is all manual work, is to take this eye layer here, I'm just going to change the name here to eyes, and let's bring the opacity down to about 50 so you can see through. We now can judge, and I'm going to be matching the corners of the eyes here. So you can see right about there, that corner matches that corner. That's pretty good. So that's a pretty good spot right in there for this eye. Now this eye is a little bit outside, as you can see over here. The side of the face is out a little bit, so that picture is a little bit different size than the picture we're working on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left-hand side of the bounding box and just squeeze this in, and I'll watch the side of the face. Now notice that the side of the face here is a little bit different as well. With the eyes open, it pushes out the flesh a little bit here above the eyes. So we're going to be copying in this little bit here, but keeping that edge. But that brings the eyes back into just about the right location. Now the nose looks pretty good. Angle of the nose looks fine. Eyebrows are pretty close. I'm just going to choose OK on that one. And let's just see where we're at. Looks like a little bit of a tilt on that. I'm looking at the corners of the eyes in here. If you want to try to adjust the tilt, just come just outside one of these control handles and you can then give just a little twist around to that. I think right there, just a touch, just a little bit of a twist is pretty good. It's hard to say. I mean, this is the, the part you have to really carefully judge. Actually, I think we're okay. Looking at the bottom eyelid on that side, I think we're actually okay. Maybe the right side is a little high, if anything. So I'm going to just use the down arrow key, move this down just a little bit and see how we're doing now. A little bit too much to get back up just one notch. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so our basic position is in now. So that's fine. Go ahead and bring the opacity back up again. The next thing we need to do is to try to bring these skin tones closer together. We're going to be losing all of this. We'll be masking all of this out and keeping it very close to the eyebrows. You still want to bring it as close as you can, so you have a really good match in here. We'll do that with an adjustment layer. Go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. And where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, make sure that's selected. Choose OK. There we are. First thing you want to do is to come over here to the middle control and move this back and forth. Looks like going to the right just a little bit. Helps on that. You don't want to go too far. I'm just looking at the, the pinks in here and the flesh tones down there. Those are getting pretty close. It's just a very, very small movement to the right-hand side. It's a little hot up here on the forehead. You don't want to bring in any more of that with this control here. You don't really want to bring in much more on the dark side with the dark hair. Maybe just a, just a touch. Just a little bit of that. So carefully control these and get this closer. If your highlights are too hot, you can bring those down just a bit 
with the right hand side. I don't do very much. That's really about as far as I want to go on this. Okay, so we're closer. You may want to adjust the coloration depending upon the image you're using or the two images that you're using. If you need to adjust the coloration, it'll be done with another adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Again, use previous layer for clipping mask. Check that, choose OK. And in here you can do such things as adjusting your saturation a little bit. You can adjust your hue a little bit in here. If you think it has too much of one color, like this looks like it's a little bit more yellow up in here. It's hard to tell sometimes on flesh tones because there's so many colors actually in the flesh tone. Change the channel to yellow and then try adjusting your hue here and see if that helps. I think just a little bit less yellow. Hard to say. Maybe I'll leave that alone. Let's try the reds. And again, just do a little shift on the reds, see what happens. I think I'll leave that alone as well. So I'm not going to do much in here with a color shift, but this is how you would do it if you need to balance your colors. You come in here and do this. I would do the levels first and then add colors in second. Okay, now let's begin to come in and hide the parts of this image that we don't want and we'll then come back and forth a little bit on this. So come down to the eyes, make a layer mask in here, and we'll be hiding this part with the layer mask. Now on a layer mask, white shows and black hides. I want to hide this stuff out here. So make sure I'm on black. Go to the paintbrush tool, find a nice brush this looks pretty good as a start. I, this is 30 pixels and it's a soft brush. Notice that right there. If you have a hard brush, just come down to your soft brushes or open up brush settings and on the hardness control right here, go clear to the left on that so it says zero. And then on the layer mask, look for that light blue outline. Just begin coming in here and painting into the edge to help blend those in. Now we're seeing some eyelashes underneath. That's the next thing we're going to have to fix is those eyelashes. But let's first get the rest of this taken care of. And just kind of blend this in a little bit. Now as I come in closer to the actual image in here, and closer to the eyebrows, it looks better and better because we're, we're not seeing as much of that color difference any longer. A little eyebrow happening up there, we'll have to fix that. And I think here I'm going to just open up my brush a bit and a little bit larger brush. Okay, pretty close, pretty good. It's a few things that need fixing. Maybe the nose is off by a little bit right there. Let's see if I can touch up that edge and bring the original. Okay, the original nose is cutting up this way. So let's go back to our layer mask still, reverse the colors, and I'll bring back in a little bit of the other nose because I have those lined up well down here. Okay, that's pretty good. We have the eyes basically in place and the photo is blending in pretty well. We now need to clean things up. We need to clean up these eyelashes down here and clean up the edge right up here, clean up that eyebrow right there. I'm using the new eyebrows and not the old eyebrows. To do that, let's come down to the background layer. Copy this layer up here. So I have a new layer. I'm doing that because we'll be doing some clone stamping on this and I don't want to damage the original. So I have the original saved just in case I mess it up up here. I can then trash this and try again. So I'll just make a copy of your background to a new layer and work on the new layer. Now on this, I want to get rid of these eyelashes and we'll do that by cloning from down here up into this area here. Okay, clone stamp tool. So the brush is a little bit on the small side. I'll bring this up. Again, it's a soft edge brush. The larger the brush is, the smoother the blend will be. We're just going to copy just from down here and just go straight up with this, trying to following the contour of the light. So hold the Alt key down, choose your clone from point, let go, and then come in and clone up. Do a little bit right there. There we go. I'll just leave that little hair there. That's okay. 
on the area up in here. We'll clone from the forehead and come down just a bit. Again, trying to match the tones. What we have happening there is a shadow coming in, and I'm just trying to hide that shadow. We'll do a final cleanup on that edge in just a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's now get this bit right here. Again, clone stamp down, just pull it straight up. Just do a little bit right in there. A little bit right in here. This is the tricky part of the whole process is getting this clone stamp looking just right. Okay, so far so good. Looks like a pretty good match now on that. Everything looks fine. Let's now fix just a little bit right up in here and then I think we have our fix done. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. And for this, I want to have this hard edge happening in here. So I need to have a selection. So I'll grab my selection tool I'll change my tool here. This is a little bit easier tool to use. And I'll set the feathering here at one pixel as well. And then using the polygonal lasso tool, I'll come down and just carefully create that edge that I want, that shape I want right up in there. It's as far as I need to go. I'll come way out here. Now all I'm doing this for is to give me a mask so I can do some clone stamp right in here and it's not going to go into the hair. I still want to use a soft edge brush and if it came too close to the edge I get a soft edge spilling out over there. So this selection allows me a mask that I can clone stamp into. So back to the clone stamp tool. Come over here, grab a little bit of that and then this clone stamp right there cleans up that edge. We can now deselect that and there we go. It looks nice. Alright, let's back to full screen. There are the open eyes. I'm going to take the background layer here, make a new layer of this, pull it above everything else. So there's the original and there's with the open eyes. And the reason why this works is because I took the eyes off of the same girl, off the same model, and she was in basically the same position so that the eyes matched very closely. It's much, much more difficult to try to take eyes off of somebody else and place them in. That's part of the reason why the new open eye tool here only works with people looking straight at the camera. If you're straight at the camera, anybody looking straight at the camera is going to be basically the same pose. So you have to find a matching pose, preferably from the same person, preferably in similar lighting to make this as good as possible. But there you go. That's how you can do it. That's how you can open closed eyes here, again, without having to use that new tool and this also works in any version of Photoshop Elements. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.